Hello again, everyone, and thanks once again for joining us this time for Tuesday's edition of Alaska Statewide Weather. I'm Dave Percy. Up first on our hazardous weather graphic, we've got coastal flood advisories out uh, here for the western Arctic coast, specifically from Point Barrow westward, and that uh, kicks into effect at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, and uh, remains in effect until uh, midday Thursday. I think 1.30 in the afternoon it's due to expire. Uh, that's due to uh, increasing west winds as the front comes down from the north, looking for strong west winds to develop and increase, uh, produce high surf, washing to the top of the beach, and that could cause some minor beach erosion during the time frame. Otherwise, not on the chart here is the flood warning out for the Yentna River and that's, uh, let's see, that's for, uh, well, currently, it's out currently until uh, tomorrow morning, Thursday, or Wednesday morning, and that's uh, expected to crest, yet in the river expected to crest uh, this evening, and uh, could be some minor flooding occurring. Otherwise, other rivers in the Susitna Valley expected to be near bankful, uh, such as the, uh, uh, Montana Creek River, that's uh, producing, that's a little bit over bankful and producing some minor flooding, but generally Susitna Valley rivers will be near bank, bankful uh, through Wednesday with a flood warning on the Yentna. Now moving on to fire danger, uh, still this zone up here along the northwest coast uh, from about Point Hope down the coastline there, not quite reaching Kotzebue. Then in across the Noatak Valley, and actually some extreme, just barely getting in the extreme zone there, but that, uh, due to the dry conditions and the gusty northeast winds that have been uh, blowing up there, and still Howard Pass up there in the Brooks Range seeing gusts over 40 miles an hour this afternoon. With uh, Kivalina, gusts 30 miles an hour out of the northeast, uh, but those winds starting to diminish here this afternoon, so these conditions should be better tonight and into tomorrow. Looking at satellite imagery, you can see lots of clouds here across southern Alaska, although breaking out, band right through here, lifting northward and uh, much drier behind that, just a few showers and clouds, and lower clouds also coming in, and then uh, clouds and more showers there along the Alaska Peninsula <clears throat> to the eastern Aleutian areas, breaking out over the central Aleutians, and also uh, look pretty dry today for the Seward Peninsula area with... Uh, also back along the northwest interior, as you can see, clouds starting to form and drop down toward the western Arctic coast, not quite reaching it at mid-afternoon, uh, but that's associated with the next storm that's going to be kicking those winds up and spreading some rain in. There was uh, snow falling earlier today at Kaktovik. There were 28 degrees this morning with uh, light snow falling and fog. That has since moved out. Temperatures have uh, pushed up near 40 along much of the Arctic coast this afternoon and a fair amount of rain falling over the uh, upper Tanana Valley, 40 mile country, back in actually to the mid Tanana Valley, actually all the way over to Tanana, and uh, even down in areas of Copper River Basin, seeing anywhere from a quarter to possibly as high as a half an inch of rain, and extended down to the North Gulf Coast, basically dry over the Panhandle, a few isolated showers in that area. And uh, rolling this again, you can see uh, something of a low pressure area in here, mostly a loft at this uh, uh, and seeing how the clouds are spinning, also a week or low at the surface, slowly dropping southeastward. And that'll be uh, keeping it pretty unsettled over the Alaska Peninsula and Bristol Bay for the next couple of days. On the chart, here's this uh, low, greatly weakened from what it was yesterday and the day before, tracking slowly eastward into the interior. Again, a lot of moisture with that, with uh, anywhere from, uh, fair, again, a fair amount of rainfall occurring here with uh, Again, Kalskag, three quarters of an inch of rain during the 12 hour period ending at 3 p.m. this afternoon. And then over in the Susitna Valley, Ruth Glacier picked up six tenths of an inch of precipitation. 
that's going to keep those uh, stream levels high in the Susitna Valley with the rainfall uh, at least in through tonight and into tomorrow, then things will con or st should start to improve with drier conditions. Rain along the North Gulf Coast today, uh, also in the interior, 10 and a third of an inch of precipitation. Cordova, four tenths of an inch down along the uh, coastline here. Much lighter amounts over the northern panhandle. Uh, just some scattered showers there, isolated down to the south. Uh, generally dry conditions with light winds. And uh, Chena Ridge, area northeast of Fairbanks, picking up anywhere from four to six tenths of an inch of precipitation during the day today. And for tonight, uh, this whole system continues to move eastward there, continues to weaken. That's going to keep the uh, central Tanah Valley on the wet side there. Uh, much of the Tanah Valley should dry out a little bit here over the uh, eastern or some of the 40 mile country. Uh, Delta on down north way in Toke should be mostly dry. Copper River Basin, still a pretty good chance of showers this evening, as well as along the North Gulf Coast into northern Cook Inlet. You can see farther to the southwest starting to, or definitely drying out, maybe some clearing. Uh, becoming partly cloudy, Kodiak Island with westerly flow. This system back to the west here, slowly dropping southeastward. A trough across the Alaska Peninsula, rain, fog, and uh, drizzle. Showers up to the southwest coast. Scattered showers along the trough axis here in toward the uh, parent low over the eastern interior. And the panhandle could see low clouds, fog, drizzle along the coast, Port Alexander, Sitka, Mount Edge come on up to Elfin Cove, otherwise dry over the interior, risk of a shower in the north. And warm front now coming in toward the Arctic coast later tonight. This, that'll actually start to increase the winds a little bit and increase the chances of rain, but should stay dry through tonight and uh, improving on the east side, dry over the northern interior. And high pressure out here over the Bering Sea, holding that front back to the west there, that's uh, west of Shimya. But uh, some of that moisture does edge in late tomorrow afternoon. Uh, should be into some light rain and back to the IFR for the western Aleutians. Not much of an increase in the winds at this point. High pressure holding over the central Bering Sea. This low, very weak as it is, slowly tracking southeastward, although not that fast. Uh, right over Bristol Bay, showery, mostly cloudy and cool here with a little bit more extensive showers from, say, King Sam and Igigik. Maybe up to Pedro Bay, showers from Iliamna into Kodiak Island. Cook Inlet, maybe some clearing tomorrow afternoon. A little bit of sunshine, showers along the Alaska Range. Chance of an isolated thunderstorm <clears throat> from the central Alaska Range on up toward Eagle. And then here's that uh, front coming down to the Arctic coast there, increasing those westerly winds uh, of anywhere from 25, guess 45 miles an hour possible there uh, along all of the Arctic coast actually with uh, rain spreading eastward, warmer conditions, uh, a little bit warmer. I'd uh, drop the snow, probably won't see the snow that you saw the last couple of days like at Kaktovik, Barter Island, and also at uh, Barrow. Otherwise, partly sunny for the southeast coast, high pressure right off the coast, but this system down here will track northeastward. It's f fairly weak, but that'll bring a chance of rain up to the uh, central and south coast uh, areas in the afternoon on Thursday. Otherwise, uh, partly mostly sunny over toward the border. No change up in the north, still a daily risk of some scattered shower activity and showers along the North Gulf Coast, uh, a little more numerous from the Wrangell Mountains up across eastern uh, Copper River Basin area. Showers south central Alaska, tapering off along the Alaska Range and then ending. Looks uh, pretty dry here over the Cusquam Valley, northward up into the interior again. But uh, westerly flow now up there, so probably be more clouds here along the coastline. Very weak trough through here. Stationary front uh, up along the north slope, uh, still north of the Brooks Range area. That'll bring a chance of rain. Possibly could slip over into the northern Koyukuk Valley, and that's about it. But uh, north of the Brooks Range, north slope on out to the Arctic coast, looks pretty uh, wet. And uh, winds maybe not quite as uh, strong as they will be tomorrow up there, a little less gradient, but uh, still we have waves moving eastward along that frontal boundary. It can tend to uh, pick the winds up and the precipitation with each passing uh, developing wave, and then that tapers off when they pass through. High pressure holding over the Bering Sea, but a little different orientation now. Uh, again, allowing westerly flow across the northern Bering, easterly along the Aleutians, so that's going to allow a little bit of moisture to slip on up to the central Aleutians. Only bringing a chance of rain, fog, drizzle, that same pattern will extend all the way out to Shimia, but to a lesser extent. 
And looking at the uh, forecast lows for tonight, not too much cooler than they were this morning here. Uh, mostly low 30s on the east side, mid 30s central Arctic coast, 40s back to the west. North slope, uh, Brooks Range, upper 20s to lower 30s there. Uh, that 27 forecast low at Anatuvik, mid 40s central Tanana Valley, lower 40s on out to the southwest coast, upper 40s for the Perloffs, and uh, 45 to 50 for the Aleutians. Upper 40s, south central Alaska, lower 50s in the Panhandle. Highs tomorrow, uh, 65, maybe 70 on the southern southeast coast, closer to 60 up to the north. Upper 50s to lower, maybe mid 60s here, south central Alaska. Upper 50s near 60, southwest interior, all the way up to uh, upper Yukon Valley, just barely reaching 60 degrees. Although North Waitoke and those areas, uh, the Besna might meet, reach the lower 60s. Milder on the Arctic coast now, looks like uh, 40s, lower to mid lower 50s on the west side, and then for the lows the following morning, definitely milder, uh, mid, low, mid 40s for the Arctic coast there, and staying pretty mild here over the interior areas in the afternoon. Looks like highs in the lower to mid 60s. Mid 60s, Susitna Valley possible, especially for Willow Big Lake, and the Panhandle, uh, mid to upper 60s, we'll call it here for the southern areas, uh, lower 60s on up to the north, not too bad. About the same there for the eastern interior areas. And out to the west, uh, lower to mid-50s, St. Lawrence Island down along the southwest coast, and lower 50s across the Aleutians. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Flying weather, marginal VFR over southern half of Alaska, uh, south uh, VFR from Norton Sound into most of the Seward Peninsula, northeastward there up to the uh, eastern Arctic coast and over to the border. And IFR here, Kuskokwim Bay, eastward to Iliamna and the Alaska Peninsula, much of the Aleutians in the IFR. Perbloffs, marginal up to St. Lawrence Island and IFR, North Gulf Coast, on up into the Talkeetnas and uh, toward Windy Pass, areas of IFR over the Panhandle. Tomorrow afternoon, VFR breaking out southern part of the southeast coast with marginal conditions to the north, as well as the Gulf of Alaska into the southeastern Copper River Basin, Prince William Sound, part of the Kenai Peninsula marginal, Cook Inlet VFR into the central northern Cusquam Valley. Some marginal VFR up here along the Alaska Range, Denali Park, on up uh, just about to the White Mountains, and then back to the VFR, area of IFR up there in the northwest, as well as the uh, eastern Arctic coast, a little bit of IFR, and more IFR out west. For the uh, morning Thursday, IFR here, uh, pretty much the rule for the entire Arctic coast and part of the North Slope and marginal VFR in the Brooks Range, areas of the Eastern Interior, pretty widespread along the Alaska Range and southward. Then you get into the IFR, Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak, on in across the uh, Coast Range Mountains to the uh, Wrangell Mountains. Marginal VFR for the Panhandle. And then IFR here over the Northern Bering Sea and most of the western central Aleutians, otherwise marginal. And then for uh, Thursday afternoon, IFR there from oh, roughly Point Lay eastward to uh, Prudhoe Bay, and then marginal for Kaktovik Barter Island. Some marginal VFR extending down across portions of the upper Yukon and Koyukuk Valley, right on down in toward just about the uh, uh, Fairbanks area, and then back along the uh, Alaska Range there a little bit with uh, mostly VFR out here to the west, IFR, Bering Strait Coast, St. Lawrence Island down to just catching the Perbolos, marginal VFR, southern Bering, Alaska Peninsula, and the North Gulf Coast into the northern Panhandle. Passes, Anatovic and Adigan, pretty good. VFR tomorrow for both those passes, Lake Clark and Merrill, also looking VFR. Rainy though, marginal VFR beginning, trending toward VFR later in the morning, and that same trend for windy, lower conditions, AM, better in the afternoon. Isabel, kind of a marginal VFR day. The entire day and for Mentasta, occasionally marginal, but not quite as marginal as Isabel will be. And for Tanita, marginal VFR becoming VFR. And Portage, uh, marginal kind of day there. And for Chilkoot and White, look for a slow improvement uh, from IFR to start to marginal VFR, maybe better in the afternoon. Freezing level showing 6,000 feet here over the northern panhandle, sloping up to 12,000 there over the Queen Charlotte. It's kind of a gradient, suggests. Uh, 
pretty good, uh, or at least the uh, jet coming into that area. Otherwise, uh, 4 to 6,000 here, mostly 6,000 over the southern interior. A little cooler up to the northeast. Bering Sea, uh, pocket of 4,000 foot, freezing level slipping southward here to the Pribilofs and the uh, eastern Aleutian areas. Icing, areas of here, just uh, spotty areas of possible isolated moderate uh, central Alaska range, Copper River Basin, Yakutat, and also here along the southwest coast, Bristol Bay, southern Kodiak Island, and maybe a zone up there above about uh, 4,000 feet actually, the, uh, from Kivalina, northwest coast, central Arctic coast. Uh, some heavier icing showing up out here to the west, but just barely reaching the western Aleutians uh, in the afternoon with the uh, considerable moderate staying off to the southwest. And for the jet stream, upper level low there, still parked near Cusquam Bay for tomorrow. Jet stream coming around 80 to 90 knots uh, from the northwest there across the eastern Aleutians. Pretty light flow over the interior, southwest 70 into the Panhandle. Westerly 50 knots on the eastern Arctic coast. 9,000 feet, uh, not too bad. 15 to 20 knots here across Kodiak. And then 10 to 20 picks up to 20 to 30 there up toward the Arctic coast. 35 knots out of the west for the central Arctic coast. That's going to be the windiest area uh, tomorrow, both... Uh, at three and or at nine and three thousand feet, 30, 40 knots there, central eastern Arctic coast. Otherwise, five to ten, Gulf of Alaska panhandle, pretty light over the southern interior, maybe 25 out of the northwest on the southwest side of this low coming across the Alaska Peninsula. Turbulence wise, considerable moderate chop there from Point Hope eastward to Kaktovik into the north slope with uh, maybe a little bumpiness uh, over the St. Lawrence, Lawrence Island area. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and joining me once again is Cindy Preller. She is the Tsunami Program Manager for the National Weather Service in Alaska region. Thanks for joining us again, Cindy. Thank you, Dave. We're talking about tsunami awareness and safety here in Alaska especially, and one of the things that has been uh, your, one of your main focuses is uh, the Tsunami Ready Program. What is that, and uh, how do Alaskans find out more? Awesome. Yes, yeah, Tsunami Ready is a National Weather Service hosted program mm -hmm. in uh, partnership with Storm Ready. Okay. And it is a program that we uh, conduct with our partners in the state, mm -hmm. but it's mostly community driven. So if okay. a community wants to become Tsunami Ready, well, the first thing they need to do is get a hold of me or, or their local WCM at a weather mm -hmm. forecast office okay. or their Tsunami uh, team at the state level. So, and this is something that's a NOAA grant, so there's money available to help encourage the preparedness at, at the local level there in the city or the, uh, the village. Yeah. What are some of the places that have done this already? Oh, our oldest tsunami ready city is Seward, Good. you know, but also Sitka, Homer, Valdez are the, you know, the main players, but we've got, mm -hmm. we've got several tsunami ready communities that I'm very proud of. It takes several years to accomplish this. Mm -hmm. And so a few of the things that they do is um, the tsunami risk will be assessed by okay. someone like me or another scientist will help find out, you know, really what their probability is. Mm -hmm. We'll create an inundation map, an evacuation map. Okay. They'll have a mitigation plan. Um, we will set up uh, some partnerships with the schools, yeah. uh, make an evacuation shelter, and then they need to practice. But it is the city that owns the program, really. Mm -hmm. it, it's up to them. And many cities would like to have sirens, and so we help them get those. And you know, and they practice. They have to practice. Sure. So let's say I'm driving into a place like Seward that's tsunami ready. What are some of the things I should look for as maybe a visitor, that no, so I know maybe where I need to go or can be more aware of my tsunami risk? Absolutely. The tsunami ready signage is, is really blatant. It's this, okay. you know, blue and white curling wave sign and, mm -hmm. and there's different shapes of signs that will show you if you are in the hazard zone or mm -hmm. where the evacuation routes are and when you're out of shelter. Okay. So this is a, a multi-step process that helps the uh, residents be more aware of their own risk but then also prepare for when that risk arrives. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And, you know, many communities um, uh, sound their sirens daily, some sound, sound them weekly, you know, okay. to make sure everybody knows what they mean. Mm -hmm. And um, there's often drills. We have an annual drill once a year. We have Tsunami Awareness Preparedness Week. Mm -hmm. And that's a good time for each community to, to do some exercising. 
Okay, and is this a program that is unique to Alaska? Absolutely not, it's national. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, all over the country you'll have the same signage, so it's, it's consistent. Good, so if I'm taking the kids to California, I should be able to see something familiar. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And you know, some communities hesitate because they think it'll discourage tourism. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to tell those communities that what they're actually doing is they're encouraging responsibility. Sure. The tsunami's going to happen. Right. And it's gonna hit every coastline. So, you know, it's, it's not about when, it's, mm -hmm. it'll be any time. So the fact that they're showing tourists that they are making steps to be prepared for this, I think would encourage people to want to stay there. Right, and that would be no different than, say, you or I visiting the Midwest where we know there's going to be really bad thunderstorms and maybe there's a risk for tornadoes. We're, we're aware of that risk when we go there. Absolutely, if I see a mm -hmm. sign for a tornado shelter, I'm gonna remember that. Right, mm -hmm. okay, all right. So we're just doing a better job of being more prepared with something that's bound to happen again. I hope so. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Where can people uh, go again to learn more about the Tsunami Ready program here in Alaska? Well, one, there is a Tsunami Ready website. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just Tsunami Ready Google and that'll tsunami get ready. you there. Mm -hmm. okay. And then probably the best person for people to contact is their warning coordination meteorologist okay. at their local weather forecast office, which is Anchorage or Juneau, most likely. Okay, all right. So most of the folks along the Bering Sea coast, again, are not at a huge risk for tsunamis. No, they don't need to worry about it. Okay, Thank very you. good. But always learning to be uh, prepared no matter where you are in Alaska, uh, no matter what the risk, always a good step. And tsunami is a major player in that, as we well know from events like 1964. Mm-hmm. Okay. Alaskans are resilient. I really believe in them. Very good, very good. Well, Cindy, thank you so much for joining us again. And uh, please make an effort to uh, learn more about the Tsunami Ready program in your village and uh, town if you haven't already. Uh, we'll be back with Cindy again uh, next time to talk more about the Tsunami Warning Center in Palmer, Alaska. We actually have a group of geologists working for the National Weather Service. So scratch your head on that one and we'll join you next time. I'll see you next time on Alaska Weather Packs. <music>now, uh, well, it's still more or less along the coast on the east side there, and not much change over the next several days. So coastal water forecast for tomorrow, west winds 15 knots, except northwest 15 on the south coast. Seas running 8 to 9 feet, south 20 for Lynn Canal, seas 4 feet, south 15, Stevens Passage, northwest of 20, Clarence Strait. And for Thursday, south winds at 10 for uh, the south coast, as well as Clarence Strait, central inside waters, light winds, Lynn Canal south 15, and south 10 to 15 on the north coast. He sees now down to six feet. Prince William Sound, light east wind, sees two feet. West southwest of 15 with uh, six to seven foot seas for the north Gulf Coast, southwest 15 for the Barren Islands, west 15 Kamishak Bay, and for Cook Inlet. South southwest 15 to 20, stronger south of the Forelands. And then those will be even lighter on Thursday, south to southwest, just 10 knots for the inlet, two to two foot seas. Same thing for uh, uh, Kamishak Bay and the Barrens, all south, both south at 10 knots, southeast 10 for the western north Gulf Coast, east side here south at about 15, and winds stay light in Prince William Sound. Now out to Kodiak, southwest, 15 knots there, about sums it up, four to six foot seas. And that pattern extends all the way down to Castle Cape, Alaska Peninsula, west winds at 20, south 10 for Bristol Bay. For Thursday, north 10 for Bristol Bay and uh, north 15 on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, west 15 here on the Pacific side, Castle Cape up to uh, Sitkanak, south 15, four foot seas. Light winds now, light and variable 10 knots, uh, basically north for Shilakoff Strait, maybe west or so on the east side. And for the Aleutians, uh, Again, out here far to the west, uh, west of Kiska, southeast 20 in the afternoon in response to that, edgy, that front edging eastwards, these buildings six feet, otherwise light northwesterlies at 10 knots here across the central Aleutians, 15 knots for Mac Island there out of the northwest, and Unalaska Island picking up to about 20 knots. 
And then those drop off 10 to 15 from the northwest for Unalaska Island, getting more variable here to the west and central Aleutians northeast at about 15, still light, four to six foot seas. East winds 20 knots for the areas uh, from west of Adak all the way out to Attu Island. Southwest coast, uh, northeast 15, south of Nunavak Island, 20 knots along the Yukon Delta coastline. St. Lawrence Island and Norton Sound, north 15, northeast, northwest 20 for St. Matthew Island and the Perbolofs. Thursday, light southerlies for the Perbolofs at 10, west 15, St. Matthew Island. Nice northwest breeze there along the coast, southwest 15 for St. Lawrence Island into Norton Sound. And small craft advisories here for much of the, Ar all of the Arctic coast, uh, 25 to 30 knots from west-southwesterly directions, and 25 knots all the way down to Cape Thompson, 20 knots south of Cape Thompson. And then on Thursday, uh, lighter winds coming up, west-southwest 20, tw uh, 20 knots here up to Cape Beaufort, and then westerlies at 20 for the remainder of the coastline, picking up to 25 knots here for that eastern zone over toward Demarcation Point. For tonight, again, uh, rain continues over the uh, east central interior areas, but should start to become a little bit lighter. Showers all the way down to the North Gulf Coast into Yakutat. Uh, little clouds fog drizzle along the southeast coast. Fair up to the north. Uh, warm front starting to uh, signify a change. Next system coming on in, picking those winds up that will result in those uh, high surf advisories. High pressure out to the west. That front edges in close enough to bring a chance of rain to the eastern Aleutian, or the far western Aleutians late in the afternoon. Weak low, damp unsettled here, Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island. Isolated showers in the interior with uh, some sun breaks, uh, even into Cook Inlet, maybe Prince William Sound. Isolated thunderstorm chance, really not much of one. High pressure, dry over the panhandle, partly sunny. Front on the Arctic coast uh, pretty much stays in that position. Once it moves down there and the westerly flow there, lying parallel to the wind field, doesn't move much. Just get a series of waves rippling eastward along that frontal boundary, kicking the winds up. But on Thursday, winds should be lighter than they will be tomorrow up there. And then uh, pretty dry over the interior. Chance of showers southeast interior and rain approaches the southeast coast on Thursday afternoon. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Our clients appreciate our